look at this hive, you would think that I would be very, very excited and very happy, but I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, this yard is an example of uh, when life gets ahead of you. That is, out of a hive of, excuse me, out of a bee yard of 10 hives, that is my only survivor. So, uh, like I said, it was not the weather. It wasn't disease, at least not that I could tell. It was just uh, an example of life getting ahead of me. And uh, last year, I started it off really, really good. Uh, I built my hive. My hives came out of last winter extremely strong. I'd only lost a couple out of, out of 10. So I started with 10, ended with 8. Uh, built back up to 12, actually 13, going into last fall, or I should say last summer. Uh, everything was going great. The management was doing great. Uh, I was able to get down, manage the hives, do all the mite control and the treatments, and uh, everything was looking awesome. Uh, and then life got ahead of me. About, uh, about last July, um, uh, life, like I said, life between, between family, work, and uh, everything else, life just got to completely out of control. And I could never really seem to get caught back up. And uh, the bee yard suffered. Uh, I couldn't, uh, I always ran out of time. And the, the bee yard, like I said, the bee yard was, was basically the bottom of the list. It seemed every time, every week. So uh, as a result, the hives went into the winter. Uh, I didn't treat them. Uh, I did harvest the honey, but that, that even was a struggle. But I couldn't get back down to feed them, so most of these still had honey going into the winter. And these, these are just some of them. I got some more over here. Um, most of them went into the win winter with honey on them, but I sh they, they all needed, oh, probably another 20, 30 pounds of uh, uh, sugar, sugar water, some syrup, just to tie them through. Uh, a week ago, I had another hive here that was full, but by the time I got down here with food, uh, they'd already starved out, and, and I didn't see a lot of brood. Uh, and the nest was really, really small, so I, I think something happened to the queen as well. But uh, be that as it may, this is an example of uh, just how fragile uh, beekeeping can be, and how uh, how unforgiving. Uh, you know, under some certain circumstances, the bees can be relatively forgiving. Um, going through four or five months of winter, they, they just can't be forgiving. It's just there's just no way. So, so anyway, so I've got this one now. Um, that top box is nothing but honey that I took out of some dead oats and put in here. And so that means these, this one here, it will not starve. And then I'll, I'll go get some axillic acid here in the next week or so and treat them and uh, make sure I can get them nice and strong when the spring hits and everything starts to, uh, to bud. And then uh, we'll decide how much, if, if any, that I want to build back up. So. Um, I can take this one hive if it does build build up and split it into four or five Or I can just manage the one for now or, or you know take the year off and, and let somebody else manage it for me so, but, uh, but yeah, so it's like I said it was a uh, it's frustrating you, know, you spend you spend all that time and effort and energy Building something up and then life gets ahead of you and, uh, Things you just don't see see coming and uh, Whammo zero so um but anyways it, it is what it is uh that one there has got this one here has got uh, in the snow. um this one's got a pretty good nest in it uh you can see a bunch of dead bees down the bottom there i'll scrape all those out and give them a clean bottom board and then uh, they've got plenty of food right now one of the broken frames i got on top it's got some honey in it um but uh but anyways there we have it an example of why you've got to be on top of it uh, you gotta you gotta have your a game all the time if not this is this is what could happen but uh we'll see what happens here uh, a couple weeks down the road talk to you later